And welcome to Mobile World Congress 2017. We're here with Kevin Schatzkammer. He's a Vice President of Service Provider Solutions and Strategy at Dell EMC. And Kevin, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for being here. Um, you're in charge of a lot. You're in charge of strategy and architectural ev evolution, really at the intersection points of network technologies, virtual platforms, and also software programmability. It's really hard for me to even say that you have to manage all of that. Uh, what is your experience in those roles? So it's, uh, it's a great question. So I, I came out of the networking world. My entire background is in networking. Uh, I've spent a lot of time working with service providers over the last 20 years in lots of different areas around the evolution of mobile data, the evolution of mobile networks, and incorporation of cloud technologies. And when I came over to Dell EMC, um, the, the role that, that, that I've built and the team that we've established here is really focused on being a strategic advisor to the service providers. Because if we think about the evolution that they're going through, the technologies that Dell and EMC brought together around compute, around compute and servers, storage and networking, are really the primitives and the basic building blocks for all of the next gen services that we see coming in cloud technologies, that we see coming in big data, that we see coming in the virtualization of the radio access networks that we see in mobility, that we see for network function virtualization. So when we look across all of those trends, all migrating towards a common set of fundamental building blocks from a hardware perspective, it gives Dell EMC as that broad infrastructure provider and the number one in 20 different categories related to that, the opportunities to act as an advisor to the software industry as they develop applications from a physical world to run in a virtual environment two service providers who are grasping and trying to understand how do I take vendor technology from Dell and vendor technology from Dell and EMC's partners, but also how do I look at all of the open source projects that are going on? How do I look at even competitive software stacks to what Dell EMC does, and how do I bring this all together and not do where I think the industry kind of is today, which is around proving it out and doing proof of concepts and doing small field trials, but actually how do I operationalize this at scale? And, and the team that I built and the opportunity that I think we have to, to really take that next step to pass the technology proving point towards the operational side is where I think the opportunity exists to, to, to really catapult the industry forward. So, so if we look across the types of skills that I think are required to do that and that we're, that we're building here and that you know, the background that I come from and the, and the DNA of my team, it's a lot less hardware centric and more around understanding how software layers on top of that infrastructure, how does virtualization take advantage of that infrastructure, and what can we do to adapt that infrastructure to really accelerate the, the delivery of software virtualization on the infrastructure. I want to continue talking about, uh, or have you talk about the software-centric network architectures, and, and you touched on this a little bit before, but what are really the drivers of, of those software-centric uh, networks? Yeah, I think you know if, if we look at the industry in, in the last 20 years, it's been a very aggregated model, right? I would go out and I would buy from a vendor a hardware stack that included software as well as all the management interfaces to be able to integrate into OSS systems and FCAP systems and various other pieces of, of the operational support systems. Uh, what's been happening with technologies like network function virtualization, network function vir virtualization has been the disaggregation of the physical appliance from the software that sits on top of it. We've seen software-defined networking that is the disaggregation of the, soft, of, the, of the networking control plane from the networking forwarding plane from the networking infrastructure plane. And, and, and now what we see with things like mobile edge computing and CO re-architected as data center is not just moving networking further and further towards compute, but now taking compute resources and embedding them deeper and deeper into the network. And the value of that is we start to think about the future around the Internet of Things, as we think about virtual reality, as we think about 5G, which, which are very big themes again this year at Mobile World Congress, the expectation and, and the requirements of those applications are extremely low latency. Now to be able to deliver that low latency at the right economics, it requires that the compute resources do get embedded in the network and do move closer and closer to the subscribers, not quite to the cell towers, not quite all the way into the access network, but maybe one hop back from that in CO locations and backhaul aggregation locations, where by sitting there I can service and deliver applications with lower latency and more real time and process data and make real time decisions on that data. Kevin, of course, as this network transformation uh, um, moves forward and evolves, these 
really uh, innovative business strategies have to kind of come to fruition. Uh, what are you experiencing at, at Dell EMC right now? When we look at all of these software defined transitions, I think that there's multiple components of them. It starts with a monetization component, right? So if, if I am going to do this, there has to be a monetization model associated with that. Right? One of the trends, the first trend that we've really seen for this software defined and virtualization has been the shift of enterprise IT spending away from building their own data centers more towards public and hybrid cloud-based models. Right? The second evolution we're seeing is the transformation of the operational models to be able to drive uh, uh, different tools, different technologies, different skill sets, and different paradigms into the network operation side. The third trend we're seeing is around leveraging big data coming off, the inter off of the infrastructure to be able to drive operational efficiency and, secure and new security paradigms that are not as dependent on the static security models that we've seen in the past. And to your point, the next one is the business model transformation. And from a business model transformation, I think that you know, we, we used to live in a world where the subscriber was captive to services that were delivered by telco operators, right, things like voice and data services were always dependent on the carrier. When that world existed, we always had a reliable belief that we could achieve very high utilization rates of the services we deployed. But as we've seen this disaggregation, as we've seen more and more Wi-Fi proliferate, and as we've seen devices and users that roam across many different networks during the course of their day, there's an expectation that services are no longer tied to the access networks, but instead are able to operate across any kind of access network. Now in order to do that and drive those monetization models, there's recognition that if I'm an operator, the services that I build have to be profitable with very, very low adoption rate, somewhere in the nine to 15% range, and they're not services that I can spend between six and 12 months to build. They're services that I need to be able to roll out very quickly look, see how they succeed in the market, and also be able to turn them down very quickly. So, so the business model is so intricately tied to how I operate this infrastructure going forward, and because those business models are short in duration and rapid in execution, it just requires an entire different way of building the entire infrastructure that sits underneath. Kevin, you're on a number of advisory boards. Um, you're also the newest uh, board member for the Telecommunications Industry Association. They have an event, I think, later this month that you'll be attending. What's your role you feel, how, what do you feel like is your role, uh, let's say, on the TIA board as an example, but just an, on advisory boards in general? I think that the challenges we face are an as an industry are exactly that. They're industry challenges. They're not my company challenges, they're not my personal challenges, and I believe that by interacting in a broader community with the startup community where I can see some of the innovations that are happening in areas like machine learning and artificial intelligence and virtual reality and big data, and I can keep on going down the list, and that's actually from, true from both the hardware as well as the software perspective, and also interacting with my peers at, at, uh, at our competitors, with my peers at our service providers that are actually our customers. It gives the opportunity for, for all of us to get together and have dialogue that's not about the competition in the industry and, and competing to win business, but instead having conversations about how we actually accelerate the transformation of the industry. And I think those conversations are just extremely important to be able to have in an open setting where it's not confrontational and everyone's in there to act as a good citizen of the industry and an ecosystem of partners rather than the competitive dynamics once you step outside those rooms. Kevin, I know TIA is excited to have you uh, attend their board meeting, uh, your first, bo first TIA board meeting uh, later this month, as I mentioned. So uh, thanks for attending. Thank you, I'm looking forward to, to joining the TIA board meeting and, and, uh, and, and trying to help and provide any insights that I may have. Thanks again for your time. Thank you. And to our viewers out there, uh, again, at Mobile World Congress 2017, you can get all of the TI Now content by logging on to tinow.org. So long. Thank <laughs> you.